guys. Thanks for tuning in to Steve Small Inn Saloon again. Introductory beverage of the day is Sleeman's Honey Brown again. It's just too yummy. Mm. <clears throat> hey, before we get started, I got to do a little product review. <laughs> a product review. You guys got to check this out. My daughter Jenna made this for me. Look at this. It's a wallet made out of duct tape. Yes, apparently you can get duct tape in different colors. This is 100% duct tape. Look at this thing. It's got uh, six different card holders in here. The cards fit perfectly in there. It's an awesome wallet. I can't even believe it. I was blown away, to be honest with you, when she gave this to me. I was like, I can't even believe you did that. Um, yeah, no money in there. I'll have to have a little word with her later about that. What are we talking about today? We're talking about um, some hidden screws that are on some carburetors. Now, I did a, I did a video um, a little while ago called How to Adjust the Carburetor on a Weed Eater or Blower. In case you missed that, when you go back to my channel and, and look at that, um, I'm going to put a little link up here. And you see that I button in the top right of your screen? Click that I button. It's going to have a link in there for you that will take you back to that video if you want to see the adjusting one. The problem with that is, is that I use this carburetor on that video. Clearly, there is a low speed and a high speed screw sticking right out of that thing. It's even marked L and H for low speed, high speed screw. You can't get it wrong. There they are. After that video, um, I got some comments on my channel. I got some comments on that video saying, um, yeah, but what if I have a non-adjustable carburetor? And I even had one subscriber actually sent me a picture of his, which was awesome. And he said, here's my carburetor. What do I do now? It's a non-adjustable carburetor. It's a Walbro carburetor. That's the one he sent, the picture that he sent me right there. And I looked at the picture and I went, oh, right. That is actually an adjustable carburetor, but the screws are hidden on you. The manufacturers don't want you to know those screws are there. They don't want you playing with them. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, where they are and um, how you get at them. I'm gonna go through a really common Walbro carburetor and a very common Zama carburetor that is gonna be on a lot of your equipment. I'll show you where those hidden screws are right now. Now you adjust these things exactly like I showed you in that video earlier. You adjust them the exact same, it's gonna work the same, but you just need to know where your low speed screw is and your high speed screw is. And you go back to that video and do what I did on there now that you know that. So I'm just gonna show you where those are. I'm gonna start with a really common Zama carburetor. This is a Zama carburetor. Now, these carburetors where they got the hidden screws on them are called barrel type carburetors. They're, they're still a cube type carburetor. Um, but they're, the screws aren't sticking out the side like that one. The carburetor that I used in that video um, is, is what I would call like a butterfly. It's a flap. It looks like this. When you open and close your, your throttle cable, your throttle lever, it opens and closes that little flapper right there. It's a butter. Some people call that a butterfly flap, whatever you want to call it. These other ones are called um, barrel type carburetors. They do the same thing, but instead of having that little flapper on there, it's a barrel that goes down into the carburetor and the barrel opens and closes instead of a flapper, like that, right there. So they're still cube type carburetors, but they work differently. They're just a different design. Instead of that flapper, they have a barrel that opens and closes like that. So we're gonna start with the Zama carburetor. Very common on a lot of equipment out there. So here it is simply right here. When you open and close your throttle cable like that, it's twisting that barrel right down the center of that barrel, 
right down there. That's your low speed screw. If you have the carburetor that looks just like this, you got your, this is called the primer body right here. You got your two fuel lines that plug on there and you got your fuel uh, primer bulb right here, right in between those two, you're gonna see this little hole right there. That is your high speed screw right there. Now you know where your low speed and high speed screw are on that Zama carburetor. How do you get at them? How do you adjust those? Unfortunately, what the manufacturer does is they stick a little plastic plug down both those holes. It's a little plastic plug that looks like this. Tiny little thing like that. They just jam that down the hole to prevent you from getting a screwdriver down there. They don't want you messing with those screws. How do we get those little plastic plugs out of there so you can get to the screws and adjust them? There's a little uh, uh, extractor tool that you can get. Um, if you go to your small engine shop, your local small engine shop, they should be able to set you up with one of these. It just looks like a, a, a screw or a very tiny bolt on the end of it. It's actually a left hand thread on it, so you screw it backwards to screw it in. Um, that's how you get those out. If you have that tool, that's fantastic. What you do is you stick that tool in there. We'll go for the high speed screw on the Zama right here. You stick that tool in there like that and you turn it backwards, what do you think? Counterclockwise. Turn it a couple, three, four turns maybe and it's supposed to screw itself into that little plastic plug and then you can pop it out and you'll see that little plastic plug stuck on the end. If you can't get it, that means that little plastic plug, unfortunately, is stripped already. You can't get that out of there, you don't have, or you don't have that tool right there. This is how I get them out. After you get that plastic plug out anyways, you're gonna need a little flat screwdriver. A little tiny watch repair screwdriver, something like that. It's a flat screwdriver. You can take that screwdriver right there and even though that plastic plug is still in there, here's what I do to get that out. I either take my Bic lighter out and heat that up. You can heat the end of that little screwdriver up. It takes a long time with a Bic. You can take a propane torch heat the end of that thing up until it's just starting to turn red. Then what you do is you just stick it in there. You just You don't even have to twist it. You just stick it in there and you're going to hear it go pssst, and it's going to sizzle right in there and it's going to melt itself into that little plastic plug. Wait now. 30 seconds, something like that, blow on it if you want. Cool it off. 30 seconds later, it's going to be hardened in there and then you can twist it and, and, and start turning it and it'll pull out of there and you're gonna see a little plastic plug stuck, melted on the end of that little screwdriver. You just knock it off there, cut it off with a razor blade, whatever you want. Now, you look down in there with a little, with a little flashlight and you see, yep, I see a little slot in there. Now that screwdriver is gonna go right back in there and now you can turn it, you're gonna feel it turning. Do the same thing on the low speed screw down the center of that barrel, right down the top of your carburetor. Do the same thing. Get those plastic plugs out of there. If you do have that tool, you can do the same thing with that. I do this a lot at work. Um, the, the little plastic plug is stripped. You can't get it out. You can heat that up just like you do that and it melts itself around those little those little threads on there and boom, pop it out and then you just unscrew it when it's cool. That's your Zama carburetor. Now you know where it is on the low speed, high speed screw on those really common Zama carburetors. Now we go back to that Walbro carburetor that looks like that. It's the exact same thing except it's different. <laughs> same thing, low speed is down the top where the barrel turns like that. That's your low speed screw. Now you're gonna see on the side of these Walbro carbs, there's a hole right here. Some of these Walbro carburetors 
are non-adjustable. You will see that the top is filled with epoxy. You can't get in there no matter what you do. It's just a big glob of epoxy in there and there's not even a hole on the side of that. It'll look just like that carburetor, but what I just said, it is truly a non-adjustable carburetor. That is quite rare, to be honest with you. If you have a carburetor like that, well, what can I say? You're screwed. You can't, you can't adjust it. The other thing with these Walbro carburetors are exactly like the Zama that I just showed you, where they have those little plastic plugs in there, you do exactly the same thing. Get those plastic plugs out and you can use that tiny little flat screwdriver and adjust it like I just showed you. Now, if you take your little flashlight and you look in those holes and there's no little obviously plastic plug in there, you have, an, you have a carburetor that needs a specialty tool now. This is what the specialty tool looks like. It's called a small D. I'll show you right on the end right here. It looks just like a D, like the letter D. That is called a small D. There are small Ds and big Ds. The one you need for this carburetor is called the small D. Right on the description of this video, I got a link there for you where you can actually buy one of these adjusting tools if you want. They're not very expensive. There is no possible way you can adjust that carburetor unless you have that specialty tool. So you have that tool now, you just simply just put it in there, low speed right there, high speed in that hole on the side. You need that tool if there's no plugs in there. So that's where those hidden screws are on those two barrel type cube carburetors right there, your Walbro and your Zama. They are adjustable in most cases. You just need to know where the screws are and how to get at them. Now you know where they are, go back to that video and adjust it just like I showed you on that last video and you should be good to go. Um, what can I say? I hope I helped you guys out again. That's what I'm here for. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Give me that thumbs up button, like it if you liked it, and uh, share it with your friends if you want. What can I say? Next time, guys, Steve out.